Hey everyone, so today I am responding to a request from somebody on how to create this kind of nested commenting structure. So we basically have sort of a page that is dedicated to holding a particular thing. So in this case, it's just, you know, a very simple, let's say a post, but in your case, it could be a product, it could be a blog post, it could be a tweet, it could be anything, right? The point is that we're attaching a commenting module with replies to whatever your object is. And so we could write, this is, you know, a test comment, we hit comment and it appears down below and then we can add a reply. You can add additional replies, you can cancel them. So how do we go about creating this? So what I've got as a starting point just to kickstart us here is a page called post. The type of content is post. So that's a thing that I already have in my database, a thing called a post. And I've got a whole bunch of them in my database and we can pull through a particular post using a uh, slug, which is how I'm going to be testing it myself. So when I, when I test my page here, I'm going to just include the slug of the post that I want to pull through. So this is our starting point for the page. What's also worth mentioning, my page layout is a column and I've got my main group inside, which is holding kind of this header content. So there's the header content inside of that group and that group main itself has a max width of 960 and that's just so that we are not pushing right up against the edge of the screen there. This group can kind of sit nicely in the middle of the page. So to start out with, let's actually put another group inside of our group main here. And this is going to be where we're going to add all of the comments. So we have to fix bubbles kind of default sizing behavior here. I'm going to make this a column. I don't want it to be fixed width. We'll get rid of the minimum width as well. And we'll just leave a little bit of a minimum height right now, which is just going to give us a little bit of real estate to play with. And let's just mark this. Let's just say, you know, this, this is the comment section. I'm going to use a pre-configured style here. Well, that's not the one I want. Uh, also too big, the H5 will do nicely. And I will get rid of this minimum height so that it fits right up. Also get rid of that that max width, we don't need that. And then let's just add an area now to add the actual comment itself. So in terms of the height of this group, that's a bit small. I think, yeah, something like 56 might work nicely. Um, I should actually give this a style, there we go. So this is gonna be where the user's gonna type their comments. So we might say add a comment as the placeholder text there. And then in terms of the, the responsive settings, again, we have to fix what bubble is automatically assigning here for us. Let's get rid of that minimum width and we'll keep this uh, minimum height settings as it is. And then we'll just add a button down below, a button which is gonna be the button that the user is gonna click in order to comment. So I'm gonna add a, a style there for myself um, no fixed width, we'll get rid of that minimum width and click fit width to content. And I have some padding properties actually assigned to this commenting button already, to the style rather of button. Um, so that's something that Bubble has just released in the basically in the past week, is the ability to add padding properties to a style. So that's what we're using there. And the other thing, I just want to push it over to the right there, that's just my preference right now. In terms of the minimum height, I think 40 pixels might do us nicely. And then everything is a little crowded as well here within this group. So I'm just gonna add some gap spacing of 16. And this is now what our group looks like. So a user can start typing something in that multi-line input will expand to fit as it grows. So of course, the next logical step is to add a condition to this commenting button, which is going to create a new thing in the database. And the thing that we want to create is an object that we don't yet have defined, which of course is going to be the comment, right? The comment. So if we go into the database here, we can create a comment. By default, of course, all data types are going to have the user field assigned. 
this guy here assigned with, to the user who was logged in when the object was created. Uh, but we wanna add an additional field here, which is gonna be, we could call it the text, we could call it the display. This is just basically where we're gonna hold the, the value of the comment itself. So going back to that workflow, of course, we're going to create a new thing called a comment. We will set that text value to be the value of that multi-line input and chuck in a reset, uh, reset inputs action for good measure. Now, you know, this is going to allow us to create a comment. Yeah, all well and fine. But as we've set it up, that comment is just kind of existing out in the ether. It's not actually attached to our post and we want it to be attached to the post so that we can leverage that relationship between a post and a comment in displaying all of the comments that belong to a particular post. So what we actually also need within this action is another field that we don't yet have set up and I'm just gonna use this little shortcut, create a new field and this field is gonna be the post. So we're gonna set this to be of type post and then which post are we assigning this to? Well, of course, it's the post living inside of the page. So this guy right here in this particular example. So now we can create you know, a new comment and in our database, that will mean that our comment is now assigned to a particular post. And that's epic because underneath here, this is where we actually wanna display a list of comments, right? This is where we want all of the comments assigned to a post to actually live. So let's add that in now as well. I'll grab a repeating group and I'll add it inside of our group main. Actually, I missed it there. So let's, let's throw it up inside of group main. Actually, we'll put it inside of group comments. Okay, so group comments is gonna hold this repeating group as well as the input for creating a new comment. We'll just make sure that we're going to make it the last item here. So there's our repeating group. We'll call it repeating group comments. Now we don't want this to be fixed. We want it to be a column because we're gonna stack some elements inside of this group, right? If we look at the example page, we've got a repeating group here. Ignoring the replies for now, we've got a repeating group where there's clearly some stacking. There's sort of some elements up here and there's like the, the text of the comment itself underneath. So that implies we're gonna use a column layout. And again, it's undo bubbles, overzealous uh, assigning of properties here. Um, we'll leave the minimum height as it is, but what we do want is to um, not have a fixed number of rows. And we'll just leave the minimum height for now. That again is just gonna give us some real estate to play with. Because if I set that to zero, we kind of get some issues. So we'll keep it at 100. And what we're searching for, what we're gonna populate this repeating group with is of course gonna be comments and where are we gonna get them from? Well, we'll rely on that relationship we already created. So we'll do a search for comments where the post is equal to the current pages post, the post living on the page. And for good measure, we will sort by the creator date. So this is gonna put the most recently created comments up the top. This has always been a little bit confusing to me, but recently after a conversation on Twitter, I had a little bit of a revelation, thanks to somebody who shared this intel, which was that all dates are actually stored in what's called a Unix format, which is just basically the number of milliseconds that's passed since, I think it's the 1st of January, 1970. So by that logic, if we're storing dates as a number, Okay, that means that the higher the number, the more recent the date. So if we start with the highest possible number, that's right now at this very second. And then if we go and descend from there, then we're essentially going back in time, right? We're starting with the highest, i.e. the most recent date. And then we're going down through the numbers. We're going lower and lower and lower. And that means we're going further and further back in time. So that's the way that this has finally clicked for me in my head as to whether we need to set this to be yes or to no. And then inside of this repeating group cell, let's actually add a group to house all of the content. So we'll call this group, group comment cell, we'll call it, because that's what we're kind of in now is the cell of the comment. And um, we want this to be a column and move this to fix it. In fact, since we've set this to be the column, it didn't really matter too much what we set the container layout of the, of the repeating group to be. But as it turns out, we will see when we start adding replies 
that actually having the column layout at the cell level is going to be useful for us. So let's, yeah, we'll leave that fit height to content. We'll leave that minimum height rather as it is. And now inside of this cell, we'll actually add the information, add this stuff here, right? This content up here. So one of those is going to be the creator of the comment. So in fact, we need to make sure that the cell inside of, well, the group inside of the cell rather is holding a comment and it's pulling it through from the current cell, the cell in which the group is residing. That means now that from this text, we can grab and turn the parent group um, and the parent group's comment. And so we'll grab the creator's full name. In fact, in my database right now, I don't have any users. So um, you would set it up this way. I'm just gonna cheat and I'm just gonna write a fake user's name. I'm just gonna add some static data here and use this pre-configured style, no fixed width as before, no minimum width and fit width to content and fit height to content. So that, that element is just kind of wrapping right up close. And I'm gonna duplicate this. This is going to be what's gonna hold the posted date. We'll see how to set that up in a moment. Let's just get the structure right first. So this is gonna be a caption. And then the last little thing is going to be a little avatar. So again, I'm going to cheat here. I've got all of these kind of funky avatars living in my posts. And these, if I click C, these are actually coming from RoboHash, which is a cool little service that lets you generate these random looking robotic avatars um, using their API. So I've already got a URL for one of those images that I'm just going to post, paste rather, into uh, into this image element as static text. You would want to obviously pull this through dynamically from your user's profile picture. And we do want to have a fixed aspect ratio actually, so it's kind of a perfect square. Um, that maybe is a little bit big, 24 pixels seems appropriate. And we'll just make sure to give it some roundness as well. If we're at 24, we need at least half of that to get a perfect circle. And of course, we want these to be in a row. Right now, they're stacked on top of one each other, uh, on top of one another, which is not what we want. So I'm going to click Jane Doe up the top there, hold down Control, and grab the other two. Then right click Group in a Row container. And I'm going to drag that avatar to the front. I am now going to get rid of that minimum width again and get rid of the minimum height. So it all just snaps nicely there. We obviously have the elements um, not aligned right there, not aligned perfectly. So we'll put Jane Doe in the middle. We'll put that posted date in the middle. In fact, I think this is going to look better if they are down the bottom. And then the last thing that we need to do is add some gap spacing. So we'll just add, say, eight column gap just to kind of pull them apart a little bit. Okay, and that means we're seeing one entry here. We're not pulling anything dynamic out yet. That's the next step, but we're at least seeing an entry here in the repeating group. So what I will do is inside of this group comment cell, I'll add another text. This is going to pull through the current cells comments text, so what we actually typed, and I'm going to give that uh, a body style. And again, we waste so much time doing this, don't we? We'll get rid of that minimum width and get rid of the minimum height as well. And I can see that this top row and the, the body of the comment are actually a little bit close together. So clicking on the cell, the group rather, in which they both live, I'm going to add a little bit of row gap there. And then when we load, okay, that is what we're seeing. So that's cool. So I should just be able to, to write here, you know, a newer comment. And there we go. So that's looking already quite nice. We'll work on this um, repeating group uh, formatting as well. So I'll actually add a pre-configured style that I've got for the repeating group which is just going to remove that separator there. Now, before we move on, let's figure out how we can pull through 
a dynamic posted date. So just like this, where it says 12 minutes ago, 11 minutes ago, two days ago. So to do that, we actually want to come down to our plugins tab and make sure we've got this plugin installed, relative time with moment.js. What that's going to give us is a little visual element here called relative time. We wanna drag that into our little row group here doesn't actually matter where it is as long as it's within this repeating group cell. And I'm just gonna make it the last item here and also just give it the smallest possible uh, dimensions. We're not using this to display any information. It's just being used to generate the, the relative time string that we're gonna display within this posted date section here. It's now so small that I can't actually see it. So let me open up my elements tree there, find it again. And then what we wanna add here, as the documentation tells us, is the, the date or time that we want to express, that we want to basically compare with some other date. So that some other date is gonna be the current date or time. So logic dictates that this date should be the date that this comment was actually created. So I'm gonna go creation date. And then the baseline date, that's the current date or time. We don't have to add anything in here as the plugin tells us, we can just leave it blank. Then what we can do is this posted date static text that we created before, we're gonna replace that with a dynamic expression that is going to pull out the current value of relative time, that little element that we placed on the screen. And the end result is this, and I, it looks like even after my spiel about the uh, created di date, I might, have, I might have done a little undo action by mistake there. So we, we want that to be yes, that should fix that. Uh, there we go, cool. So, right, and even newer comment, if we were to type that, then relative date will give us, it'll do all this logic for us. We don't have to worry about doing these weird calculations. It'll just spit out a nice humanly friendly reading. Don't even know if that's an appropriate phrase, but you'd get the drift. It prints out something that looks nice to our end users. So this is where things start to get a little bit more interesting because we have the ability to add comments, but now we want nested replies or nested comments. You can think of them as nested comments here. So how do we get this kind of functionality? I think it's worth, if I just bring up my, my little iPad over here, just sketching out the data structure here so that we can really understand what's going on. So if we've got a comment living over here, and then of course, to really complete the picture, there's also a post that this comment is attached to. What we wanna do is have right, a list of replies that's nested or attached to a particular comment. That's the way that we're gonna be able to have these replies living underneath of a comment. There's clearly a relationship between a comment and its replies. So we could imagine a number of replies, right? There's three replies. They all have relationship with a comment. So this is what we're gonna do. We are going to have a field on the reply, which is gonna point back to the corresponding comment. Simple enough, pretty simple data structure. Now where things get interesting in terms of the data structure is that we're not actually going to create a new data type called a reply because there's a benefit for us actually just using the same object, i.e. a comment, to house both comments and replies. And the reason why, if we look at the interface here, a reply looks exactly the same as a comment. It behaves the same way as a comment. So why don't we just essentially use this comment object to house both comments and replies? Or you can think of them almost as you know, primary comments and secondary comments, where the secondary comments are the comments that are attached to another comment, as opposed to being attached to the post itself, right? Where this guy is essentially attached to the post, this primary comment is attached to the post, and this reply is attached to a comment, another comment. So in terms of the data structure here, on the comment object, we can essentially just create another field. We'll call it parent comment, and it's gonna be of type comment, which is gonna let us create a relationship between those replies, which are actually just comments, right? And another comment. And now, essentially, all we need to do is recreate the same functionality that we've created for 
creating a comment attached to a post, only this time we're gonna be attaching a reply to a comment. And since we are nesting, right, we're nesting comments here, we are gonna to have to put one repeating group inside of another repeating group. So right here where we have our first repeating group, what I'm actually gonna do, I'm going to set the minimum height of this row a bit bigger, say 400. That's gonna give us some extra real estate to play with. We're gonna shrink this back up later on, no problem. But let's add now a couple of things. Let's add another repeating group. And this repeating group is gonna to be to house the replies. And the type of comment is going to be of type comment, only the data source this time is going to be another search. I'm gonna do another search for comments. But now we're gonna see all the comments with a parent comment is equal to the current sales comment. Okay, because this repeating group here, if I go reveal an elements tree, you'll see this repeating group, I'll just collapse this, okay, is inside of another repeating group. So we're nesting repeating groups. And that means that we can access the cell of the first repeating group from the second repeating group. And as before, one row is gonna be fine and we'll just make sure that we don't have any ridiculous sizing settings that we'll do for now. And then just so that we can see this working, right, we'll worry about the UI later. Oh, I'll make sure that our, our second repeating group here for replies is set to be a column, that's cool. And this text is going to display now the current sales comments text, so the text of the reply. Cool, now we need a way to create a new comment. So if I grab this multi-line input up here and hold down control, grab this comment, I'm going to control C to copy to my clipboard. I'm gonna make sure that I'm, I'm not inside that, um, that second replies repeating group. I just wanna be underneath it. And now I'm gonna control V to paste. And this can be our reply multi-line input. And this can be our button to create a new reply. And then we'll just add a workflow to this reply button, which is going to, just as for the parent comment, it's going to create a new comment. We're going to set the value, the text value of that comment to be multi-line input replies value. And now instead of assigning a post to this comment, we're going to assign a parent comment, which of course is going to be the current sales comment. And then again, for good measure, we will reset the inputs. And so let's see, for each now of our parent comments, of our primary comments, we have the option to add a reply. So let's see, this is a reply. Okay, another reply. So if I go and inspect this repeating group replies, yeah, we do have two replies actually um, in the repeating group, but it's only displaying one of them right now. So we're gonna fix up this UI, but at least we've got the ability now to add these replies. Got a fixed number of rows here. So yeah, I need to turn that off, of course. And then we should see multiple replies for a parent comment. Okay, so this is basically the crux of it. You could already go away now and start implementing some version of this in your own application, but if you wanna stick around, we're gonna do some tidy up work to actually make it like this. To have the input where you actually type your reply to be hidden behind sort of this first reply button. So we're not seeing the multi-line input like we are here by default. And also actually make our reply cell look like this, look all nice and handy. So we'll start there. If I remove this comment text, right, I could just grab this whole cell, which is holding the parent comment, right, that whole formatting, copy it and paste it inside of the repeating group that's holding the replies, okay? Then we get something like this. Fine, better though, better. We're reusing elements, so right click and convert into a reusable element. And we'll just call this comment. And at the moment, we've got a little bit of space at the bottom here. We don't want that. Um, so I'll get rid of the minimum height. We wanna enforce the spacing around this module on the pages where it's actually being placed, not here within the reusable element. So we'll just keep it clean. So this content is just sitting really snugly around the outside. We could configure the padding around the group 
as well. But, you know, I, I, I want to have kind of full control over the way that this group lines up with other elements on the page. And so I don't want to have to come back into this reusable element to adjust things. So that's why all of the elements are just going to be sitting snugly up on that left margin. And then one other thing, it looks like we've got a background color. We don't want to have that. Let's just work with the background color that we have on our main page. So going back to our main post page, if I go on this group comment cell and reveal an element just to bring it up, what I want to do is replace this group comment cell with the new comment reusable element that we just created. So I'm going to just want to place it there below the existing group. If I go reveal an elements tree, so it looks like I've got it inside. So I'm just going to bring it up the top. Cool. So this is our reusable. This is our original group. So on our comment here, when we actually created it, because this group had a type of content, our reusable element automatically got a type of comment being a comment here. So that means that on our post, all we have to do on our post page rather is for our reusable element, populate the data source. So the single input to this reusable element, which is going to be the current sales comment. If we preview that, we should see two comment groups for each comment. Yep, there we go, there we go, there we go. So that's cool. So we know that reusable element is working. That means we can delete the original. And our users, of course, are none the wiser. And now what we can also do, if I pull up my repeating group of replies, I can put a comment inside of that repeating group. And then we just need to make sure, make sure that we connect up the data source. That is an easy one to forget. And then there we go. We are seeing the replies appearing with the comments and we can add, you know, this should really be saying add a reply. And so now we can say and give extra replies here underneath comments. Okay, so that is basically enough, right? If you wanted to now go and implement this in your own site, like you have the basic mechanics here. But if you want to follow along and get this page looking a little bit more like this page with this nice sort of nested look and the ability to expand our reply group and collapse it, if you will, then, uh, then stick around. So we will start with this nested look. We've got this reply group here. Um, so I'll call this reply. And so what I want to do is basically nudge this reply group in a little bit and also nudge this um, multi-line input in a little bit. And if we look at the main page, we're also going to have this little reply button. So rather than adding these margins independently to all these elements, let's set ourselves up for success. This repeating group, which holds the reply and these multi-line, this multi-line input, this can all be, if I select the repeating group, hold down control and select the multi-line input and the reply button, and then I right click on one of them, put them in a column. This is now going to let us just add some padding to this group. And so achieve this nested look um, in one foul swoop. So it's all going to be pushed over now to the right hand side as so. Okay, so that's looking okay. And what I also might want to do, it looks like the spacing between the comment and the reply is, is a little bit tight. In fact, the, the spacing in its entirety is, is all a little bit warped. Um, so I'm going to get rid of this, this minimum height here for the repeating group. And then the other thing that's preventing it from collapsing all the way down is this minimum height of row. So I'll get rid of that. Now I should just be able to add just a little bit of bottom margin just to separate it from the multi-line input. Okay, so that's not too bad. The, um, the reply group itself probably needs a little bit of margin. Maybe eight is too small, actually we'll go 16. So we're getting a little bit of space there. 
um, between the actual comment itself and this group comment, I would say, uh, those are too close together. So I'll also add some margin there. Okay, so we're starting to get some space here. And I'll get rid of this repeater, this repeater on the, um, the repeating group of replies. So I'm gonna actually go uh, and choose this repeating group style, which is just gonna remove that repeater, okay? And now what we wanna do is this, add this kind of expanded reply group functionality. So for good measure, I'll just, I'll really anticipate the fact that we want this reply button to look a little different than the comment button up there. Sort of just the first arbitrary step. And so what we want is essentially for this whole group to collapse and for a reply button to appear, you know, somewhere down here, whenever we click either reply or cancel to expand or collapse this group. So my first step then is to put this multi-line input and the reply button inside of a group, we'll put it inside of a column, and we'll do our quick fixes here to the sizing. We don't need it to fit width to content this time. We want it, we want it to expand. And I'll add another little button, I'll add it above, which is gonna be the button that we're actually gonna use to trigger showing this, this group. So I'm gonna go choose button tertiary, which is a, a style that I pre-configured. We don't want actually a fixed width, um, but we do wanna fit width to content. And basically have this button now. When that button is clicked, we wanna display this group down the bottom. So this group down the bottom, of course, is currently visible on page load. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna collapse it and we're gonna use a custom state to trigger when, when it should actually become visible. So it's set to collapse, it's not visible right now. Okay, so you can see there's that reply button and the space where that reply group was is now collapsed, it's not inhabited. The remaining space that you're seeing there is just the natural spacing that we have between our, our elements in this comment repeating group. So now we just wanna set a, well, we wanna set a state, we'll do that on group comment, okay? So that's this group inside of the repeating group. We'll add a new custom state, which is gonna be reply, basically, oh, well, reply mode, and we'll set that to be a yes or no field. So when it's yes, then we'll display the reply group. When it's no, then we'll obviously collapse it. So by default, we'll say no, it's not gonna be visible. And that group, it's actually called group comment right now. We want this to be group group reply and we'll add a condition that says when group comment when it's reply mode and I a reason I assign the, the the custom state there is because it's really like a display mode for this comment group for this entire group here we're saying like for this group it can either be in reply mode or not in reply mode and so it makes sense to store the custom state there because it really is a custom state for this entire group. So when group comments reply mode, this is the same thing as saying it is yes, by the way, if we just leave it as it is in its abbreviated form, that's fine. So when it is reply mode, then this element is visible. And now, of course, we just need a way to trigger reply mode. So we'll use that button reply that we created before and we will add here a an action to set the state which is going to be living on group comment reply mode set the value to be yes and so now we should if we click reply there we go there that group is appearing and what we're still missing is like a cancel button to flick it back the other way so let's grab this other reply button duplicate it i actually want to put these two guys in a row container so that they're side by side. And since we have got these two reply buttons, one of them is our original button that has, yep, it has this event on it. So that means I want this guy here, which I'll call cancel. And of course the text will be cancel. I'm gonna change the styling of it. I'm going to make it the first item here in this little group. And then to put some space between these two buttons, 
I'll add some gap spacing of eight. And then of course we wanna assign a workflow to this button, which is gonna do the inverse of what our, well, we've got two button replies. So that's not what we want. Um, we'll call this button create reply to differentiate. Anyway, so let me copy the state, this, this action rather that we had assigned to that original reply button to trigger the, the reply group. And I'm just gonna paste it over here, little shortcut, and then just switch this to be no. And now in theory, we should have our, our switching logic moving in both directions. So I can click reply to display the group, click cancel to hide it. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now this button is still visible even when this whole multi-line input is, is visible. We don't really want that. So I'll add a condition here as well, which is gonna be, this is gonna collapse on hidden. I won't make it visible on page load and I'll define the condition under which it should be visible, which is gonna be when that group comments reply mode is, is no, then this element is gonna be visible. All right, so that's looking relatively tidy. This reply button feels like it's a little far away from the group above. So we might just wanna tidy up some of the spacing here. Looks like we've still got a minimum height on our kind of overall comment group here and a minimum width. So we'll remove both of those, but make sure we're not fitting width to content. And now this repeating group. So the repeating group has got some margin, the comment repeating group has got some margin that we added to it earlier. So if I remove that, yeah, that looks a bit better. That looks a bit better. We wanna go put some spacing between these buttons and the multi-line input though. So here we are, group mock reply buttons. I might just add the spacing to the actual group that contains both of them. So that's going to be, let's go eight pixels. Okay, we're almost there, I think. We might say that, you know, it's quite hard to differentiate a comment and another comment. And in fact, look at all the space. We do, what is all that space about? So that I suspect is due to our, um, well, we've got well, two things. We've got a minimum height on our repeating group itself, but we've also got a minimum height of the row. So each row has got to be 400 pixels. So that's why we've got all this extra space. So if we remove that, then we should see things kind of tidy up a little bit, or only now we're still seeing, we're seeing another issue, which is that the bottom of one of these comment groups is really close to the next one. So to fix that, I might add some bottom margin 16, is 16 gonna be sufficient? Sort of there, it's sort of okay. I might wanna add maybe a little bit more. And in fact, what I can also do is add a separator to just the commenting group so that we get this kind of look where the comment group here, right, is differentiated from the next one by these divider lines here, okay? But there's no divider lines between the replies. So by adding those divider lines in, which is what I've just done here at the, at the repeating group comments level by choosing this pre-configured style, we get these nice divider lines, only that they're kind of right up on top of the next item in this list. That's because we're actually adding we're adding padding always to the bottom of a group, but not to the top. So the next group is just starting right where that repeater finishes. So we might want to, if I actually take this down to 16, cause um, 24 might be overkill. And on group comment, I'll add 16 pixels to the top. So that's that topmost group within the repeating group. Okay, that's going to give us the spacing that we would like. Only something really subtle is that by adding that top margin, right, we've added that top margin here, which essentially means that this whole repeating group has been pushed down the page a little bit. So to offset that, what I can do is simply 
on the repeating group level, add some negative margin, negative 16 pixels to offset the 16 pixels that that first item in the list is being pushed down. So that's going to keep this kind of spacing working like we would like. And we still have the ability to add a reply, add another reply, reply, cancel. We might want to even, once we've actually typed a reply, hide this reply group again. So that's one last thing that we can do is when we create a reply, we will also now set the state of group comment reply mode to be no. And so our final kind of group now looks like this. Here is a new comment. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I cheated by, I didn't add this favicon avatar icon next to the reply button. That's a nice little touch that you can do quite easily just by adding a little image, you know, a little image element, same as we use for these Robicon icons here, and then grouping that image element and the multi-line input in a row container, which you then set, of course, with your normal sizing elements And hell, I'll just copy this one, come back to the post page. And where we have our multi-line input reply, right, this is where we add that little, that little cute little robot icon, maybe add a tiny bit of gap spacing so it doesn't look so crowded. And then you get this look as well. Beautiful, so there you go. That is a nested commenting system. Hope it's been useful. Let me know how you use it in your own apps. I'd love to see some of the stuff that you're building based off of this. Otherwise, have a great day. Happy bubbling.